Welcome back. So, Dad and I are on a new trip today. We are headed to Bridgeport, Texas to go to Jake's Transmissions, Jake's Performance. You guys have seen stuff from him before. If you guys remember from earlier in the year, or actually all the way back to when we started on the 55, remember how I was just going to borrow Dad's engine and transmission for just a little bit? I do remember that. <laughs> now that you mention it. <laughs> well, the plan has been for me to get my own stuff for quite some time, but parts and time stuff. We're now two seasons into the 55 and it's still this stuff. But earlier this year I actually had the chance to partner with Summit and do a whole content series where I'm going to be writing articles for their On All Cylinders blog talking about the new engine and transmission that we're going to be building for the 55. But we haven't had a chance to do it yet. Starts that. We are headed to Jake's. We're gonna start on the transmission. There's some really trick components that we'll share later that you guys are really gonna, really gonna be interested in. So it's a new, it's just gonna be a new Turbo 400, very similar to what Dad's is. We'll get into all the details later. Anyways, let's start getting the 55. It's own stuff. We have made it to Jake's. We are getting ready to get underway with the actual build of the transmission. We're gonna be down here for a couple days. We gotta go pick up some parts that came in overnight at a UPS store. We have quite a bit to do just because the first build is where you're crucially fitting all of the different clearances and you're setting up all those special tricks that makes it live at that higher horsepower. But this first time will be interesting because, um, and, and it's very critical because that's where you got to set it up to get right out of the gate. So that's all we'll be doing. And uh, I'm pretty pumped. I'm excited to give dad his transmission back and for me to have one. We got Ranger down here. Hi, Ranger. He's a good boy. He's really interested in what's going on. <laughs> This is Jake. You guys have met Jake before. Hi, Jake. Hi. <laughs> and that's Dad. You know him. I'm Alex's dad. <laughs> look, you guys look like you're set up to be professors at school. It could be. <laughs> I like it. We're old, wise, wise asses. <laughs> I don't think I. <laughs> I don't think I'd want you guys as a professor. Not gonna lie. <laughs> You have us as a professor. So here is all of the components for the new 55 Turbo 400. Tell us a quick overview for those that might not know what combination we're working with here. Well, we, we built the transmission for Dennis's Nova, what, back in 2018 or so. And we did really similar recase. We love these things. Uh, one and three sixteenths input shaft. And his transmission had a billet four drum and an steel. aluminum direct drum. Yeah, billet steel four drum with a big input shaft from Cohen and uh, an aluminum direct drum. Well, Sunex has come out with this new Smart Tech module, so we're gonna we're gonna upgrade to this, which is a really neat piece, and we'll talk about it a little bit more. But it it gets rid of most of the counter rotation in a Turbo 400, where in in first gear the direct drum's turning backwards. It, it doesn't happen with this. The only thing turning backwards is the, uh, uh, I think they call it a sprag shaft here. And probably the hub, the rear hub would probably- And there's a backwards. pretty neat video, I'll link it below, that Sonex put out showing what he's talking about with the forward right. in reverse direction. Yeah, better to go watch Sonex's video, they explain it in depth. Greg does a real good job explaining it, so I would just refer people to that video. But we'll talk more about that. And then um, Alan Pope, who I actually purchased this from, Jake's also a Sonex dealer, but he had some in stock on the shelf. Um, so I purchased one from him and uh, he's been helping with Scott Taylor testing the, that module. Yeah, I believe, so uh, John Hutchinson in Canada, Alan Pope, and yeah. a couple other guys were involved in the, in the development with this. It's based on the old John Kilgore super light design. And John was, was the genius with a lot of the things he did, but he could take parts. What John did is he took the the drum module out of a GM 183 speed, which was used in like the postal Jeeps, and it's similar to this, and you know, grafted it with turbo 400 parts and input shaft, and made it fit on a turbo 400. It took a lot of the weight and counter rotation. It does pretty much what this does, but John did it back in the 80s. Uh, pretty neat, pretty neat stuff. Nowhere near as strong as this because it was, it was you know, made from used parts where this is clean sheet design. 
Yep. So there's, uh, we'll get to more information, more feedback, hearing from them. But that's a really cool piece. It's going to be a big difference about this that I know really excited. you're excited about. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're excited to, to play with it. So we're kind of working off lessons learned on the um, the, well, the Nova transmission that got moved over to the 55. You guys had lots of lots of phone calls in the past year. Yeah, there's been a lot of communication. You should yeah. see my messenger. Well, we have. Uh, we started out, we built that transmission with the big input shaft because the Nova was very heavy, I think around 4,100 pounds. And uh, we, we used a one and an eighth inch main shaft, which what we're doing on this build is we're going back to a one inch main shaft, even though they're making more horsepower now. Then we have an aeromet shaft here, with Wait. a 210 gear set. This aeromet shaft, so you know, it's one of the strongest available on the market. Um, it does neck down, you know, you've got one inch uh, diameters here on the, on the bushing surfaces, but it necks down to probably about seven eighths here, so. It really oh, blows my mind. I know. I trust Jake. I trust Sonax. I trust Cohen. Cohen. Yeah. You know, they know way more than I know, but just think that is driving. Look, there's my finger. Yeah, we're going to be putting <laughs> That's probably, driving that car. You know, what, what do you, what do y'all have you know, calculated the horsepower now? It's, Hopefully it's, with the new motor, it'll be close to three. Right. So, so you went about 25, 26 right now. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. So, so you ran what, 692 in the 55. It's mm -hmm. lighter, like 33, 3400 pounds. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be uh, setting this up. So what we've learned over the last, I don't know, they've had some issues over the last year, year and a half. The big shaft is, it's all coin parts and they're good quality pieces, but you're limited to, you're stuck with it. So when you're doing drag and drive events, sometimes you get in a situation where you need to fix the transmission in the parking lot of the hotel mm -hmm. or the, the pits at the track. And you need to be able to get parts from whoever has parts in their trailer at the pits Yep. or whatever speed shop might happen to have something or whatever local transmission shop. So you may be pulling out, you may break a shaft and you may have to go get a stock shaft just so you can go make some kind of pass the rest of the week because you could still be in contention to win. And you need parts that are a little closer to stock, you know, configuration mm -hmm. like a center sport. So what, we, what we've seen over the last year, and I know it's been kind of discussed, you guys have been asked pretty frequently, I've been asked, you guys were having a bunch of direct clutch failures and we replaced the drum or you guys replaced the drum some time ago and then after that we discovered that the center sport that's a, for the big shaft it's a bigger bore here the sun gear tube this is a standard stock 480 part and the on the, on the gear set they're running since it's big shaft this is all one part and it's made together so there's nothing you can grab out of a stock transmission there and the center sport is completely aftermarket you know dimensionally different for the bore in here because this is larger diameter you can't do anything about a center sport like what y'all discovered i guess was the race week last yep. year 1.0 One, yeah. race week yeah. 1.0 last year the center sport was shot from the, the high pressure the, the ceiling rings here and here the seal the direct clutch circuit they were just completely it was worn out the ceiling ring here was about to come off the front the ceiling ring back here was about to eat through the back groove and that's where the direct clutch oil was going that was killing the direct clutches so we we got another center sport and maybe that's when we got another drum or we already had another drum right well i put the old original drum back in. right you sleeve it and put the original right. drum back in so we've, we've learned some lessons that basically it's it's a good idea to use parts that are you can maybe grab a stock part in a bind yep and get you through the race yeah and but hopefully we have not many issues this year we've learned right. a lot well, figured the, stuff the, out the custom made center sport is made out of aluminum the, yeah the one that comes with the big chef setup it's aluminum so the, the Teflon rings under 240, 250 pounds yep. of pressure over what, four or five years of- yeah. And it's driving, driving. it's street driving street on that too. Miles. Yeah. They See, don't that wear all, the aluminum. That's all the difference, because that's built for racing. Right. And it does a great job at a quarter mile at a time or an eighth right. mile at a time. But, you know, we put 7,000 miles on that car last year. Right. At 250 pounds of pressure. Right. So it's not- That's a lot of quarter mile passes. Yeah, it's not going as <laughs> a problem. It's just, we're just wearing stuff yeah, out it's, from it's wear stuff use. out from the mileage. Different and market, stuff is designed yeah. to not necessarily drive down the road thousands of miles a year. Yeah. So this cast iron center sport won't wear anywhere near like an aluminum center sport does. It was funny, earlier dad was looking at this and he said, man, I'm excited to take out a nice billet piece and put in a cast piece. Yep. Actually, you get that <laughs> in a junkyard. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's yeah, got yeah, Every transmission around. shop will have this laying around or the yeah. sun tube, you know. Yep. And this, to me, me and Dennis were talking about this just a few minutes ago. This is a factory 480 sun tube. And, you know, we're going to be putting near 3,000, maybe even 3,000 plus through this. And they, they survive pretty well. Yep. Um, 
It's, it's amazing how strong these parts were from the factory. Now you're mentioning 4L80 a lot. And people are gonna say, but this is a 400. One of the things we're doing because they drag a trailer and they're in first gear, and first gear is only a 210 ratio, which that's the Cohen 210 gear set. It's a real nice, nice piece. Since it's in compound low a lot, we're gonna center lube it where the lube returns back into the case here, into the center sport, like a 97 and newer 480. So this is like a, this is the off-road turbo 400 right. case that allows and that And that's center. already machined and ready right. to go. The off-road case is a pretty neat piece. It's made for kind of like the Ultra 4 guys, King of the Hammers. So they make it where it's center lube to use this because those guys are up shifting and down shifting often. They're also accelerating and decelerating in first and second gear often. So the planetaries take a beating. So they want a lot of oil back there. We're gonna kind of copy their their ideals on that because we want a lot of oil in the back. Another thing we did, we just discussed, <clears throat> put a 400 bushing in the front of this sun gear tube that's solid. I put a 480 bushing back here that has the grooves. So we're gonna try to kind of flood the planetaries with more oil using that method because the oil comes in the center support, goes through here into the sun tube and makes its way, you know, around the, uh, the main shaft and they go in these holes and feed down into the planetary or up here to feed the rest but we'll actually have oil coming that way too so this being at the back will feed more oil in the planetaries and kind of keep it from going out the front as much and biasing the oil to where we want it to go right and we've now we've got basically two double oil on oil because now we have this oiling over here we've got that oil right. like we've got so oil from the pump back like a 400 and early uh four lady do and then it's also gonna to oil to the center and, and we're gonna bias the oil that's going to the center to the planetaries to hopefully keep them alive in the, in, because they tow a trailer with, with these drag and drive events uh, thousands of miles. So we will get into more detail on all of the stuff as the build, as we build it, but there's a front pump half waiting about 30 miles away. 30 right? miles overnight. away. Overnight, overnight, Saturday delivery. From Cohen, right? Cohen. Cohen, yeah. So COVID, Cohen overnight and Saturday delivered it because thought that it was here and it wasn't. Rear half for this big shaft. This is one and three sixteenths and we gotta have a special pump for it. Front half of the pump, I actually re refurbished those here. I have one already ready. It's pretty standard. It's just stock Turbo 400 stuff that we're gonna put on the rear half that's based on a stock pump that's machined with a really large stator tube for the big input shaft. So we're gonna go get that, get some lunch at some point, and then come back and get to building. But this morning has been a lot of getting the little pieces like the snap rings and all that kind of stuff gathered up, the little pieces put that a, we need. Put a new bushing in the center support, new bushings in the sun tube. So it's like a recipe. You guys look like you could be bakers right now. We're you could just start mixing stuff we together. Call us the Billet Brothers. <laughs> the Billet Brothers Bakery. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> pump is secure, or pump half, I should say, but this one looks a little different as far as it's very machined because, well, it is. I did all of this machine. So did they take a stock pump and just machine it to make it look pretty? No. No, they made a custom, it is totally billet. And from a machinist standpoint, that's a lot of work. Yeah. That started out as a two and a half inch piece, you know, and they had to machine everything away that didn't look like a pump. And the whole idea is to get this big tube because we got a bigger shaft. Like I saw up here. That's what the tube would look like. Yep. Stock tube were much larger. And as Jake was saying, he thinks that this is just because they probably couldn't get stock pump cores. That's what um, he thinks don't know that for a fact but i don't know that for a fact because i almost think it'd be they'd be cheaper to cast the stock ones like the stock ones are and then so we actually didn't realize that we were getting a billet piece so but that's it's pretty of, nice kind of the comparison there hour or so we've been messing with this because we couldn't find the right tools but we this is an old school mod but we're going to do it on this so we put a, a turbo 350 stator bearing down in the center support pocket and what we did with that in the past this is a cohen aluminum drag drum for the big shaft thing of your old transmission they have a radial bearing that goes right here 
and that pocket gets machined and it, it, it locates it radially so the drum can't wobble and it, it helps protect the sprag just keeps everything running on center that's actually a better setup but with this new uh, sunx drum module this deal we're gonna do the old school mod where we put the bearing down there and when we assemble the front half of the transmission we get the front end plate tight so that this is sandwiched and can't can't run you know at an angle or off center too much so that's just allowing that's what you're doing over there on the machine right we, we milled this up. pocket so that yep. this bearing would fit so that we have mm -hmm. a flat bottom and also bearing fits in there with very little you know side to side clearance so just keeping everything just trying to keep everything centered and yep. true and the other thing this does is this will be pushed against that instead of it sits on this sun gear tube which goes down the sun gear that splines there so it takes the load from the front part of the transmission from applying it to the rear planetary the, the bearing that would be under the sun gear right here mm -hmm. there's no longer any load there this is an old trick it's not it's nothing i developed it's been around for probably 30 years it's just only been talked about publicly for probably about the last 10. I got you. That's right uh, here, also, this is the center support from mm -hmm. a 480. 480. So it's the uh, center lube. We've got the seal here, and so our fitting that goes in the case through here, we'll put the lube that comes back from the cooler in here, and it will come in there through the, the bushing and into that loop hole and go both directions which we kind of talked about earlier right. on the yeah. uh, the way we're going to set up the so loop so that's but just just so you guys know those parts interchange from the 400 to the <laughs> they don't directly interchange but since this is the off-road right. reed case right. one of the main differences in the drag case and the off-road case I actually have a drag case over there i'll go grab and show the off-road case has this boss is already machined and threaded for the fitting mm -hmm. the same as a 480 that has a tube that goes into the seal so it's a sealed lubrication point in here. The other main difference in the off-road case is it's the speedo hole is not milled, it's not machined. So the, the drag cases, those are the differences. Okay, so on to the next. What are you gonna attack next? Well, what we, what we did while we were doing this, I'll give a, a little quick class. We put the uh, center support in this is the whole rear gear chain pretty much assembled like it would be. We don't have the shell because we don't need that. But we were measuring before we put the bearing on here, and they call this a sprag shaft. So we, before we put the bearing on here, we set this on there, and we measured from this point to that point. And then we put the bearing on there, and we take the same measurement. And what we were looking for is we wanted this to come up about 10 thousandths so that we know we're not applying pressure to the rear gear chain. We're actually... You know, working off of this bearing and we actually kind of got lucky we had about 12,000 straight off the machine we didn't have to add any shims or change anything just it came out really nice. really nice and, and usually you have to machine the pocket a little deeper but this portion here is not quite as deep I, that I, I believe it's not as deep as a stock drum so it worked out really well nice so it's gonna be a nice nice deal we're we're fixing to start putting this so we're gonna drum together this, this drum module so we're getting ready to dive into this you haven't assembled one of these yet correct Just attack that shaft in. It's my understanding you don't want it to walk back. So that's pretty much going to stop that. That's what the snap ring would do if we had it in the front. But the snap ring would block three of the four loop holes. Yeah. So by leaving that out, that would be all right. After reading the destructions, decided it would be best to clearance a little of the that weld build up so that way it doesn't rub or anything. Alright, there's part of it. Okay, and the time has come to actually assemble the Smart Tech drum module. We've been talking about it back and forth this whole time, um, but this replaces the forward and the direct drum. It's a lot lighter, 
think now would be a good time to talk about why we're actually using it. Sure. So typically, um, because we do a lot of drag and drive transmissions, um, we like to use an aluminum drum. There's no band on the outside. We usually use the big sprag like this. This is actually the, the drum out of the other Turbo 100 for you guys. So it's a big shaft drum. So this is a little different than, than standard. Um, so we have that, and this would be together with a forward hub inside of it, like that, in the clutch pack, right there. And this we can, This is an iron drum with a, a billet shaft, which is a real typical, typical build, you know, a little less costly build. We can also do these drums in aluminum, and we use a steel center so that uh, the ceiling rings don't wear right here where they go on the back of the pump. And we build this drum and then we press whatever shaft we need into it. But usually when this is all put together, the two drums will look like this in the transmission with just about 30,000 separation between them. And that would stack in the transmission like that. Well, in first gear, this drum's counter rotating, reverse of the engine direction because it's being driven by the planetary backwards. While this drum is driving at approximately engine speed forward so they're, they're rotating two different directions the second gear the second gear clutches grab this sprag race and this drum comes to a complete stop in the amount of time the one two shift takes so it's pretty much instantly and then third gear the clutches in this drum grab the, the hub off of this drum and they drive together locking the planets together creating direct drive so the counter rotation the weight of this drum even the aluminum drum is about nine pounds give or take a little um, the four drum weight, even when we use an aluminum drum again, it ends up being around nine or 10 pounds with the input shaft. So this drum, the only thing that kind of rotates is the, the Sprague um, shaft and the hub and spline to it. And it, obviously the frictions that are attached to this hub will be kind of rotating. Nothing else is gonna kind of rotate in first gear. The, the module, the input shaft, and all the outer shell, and the forward clutch pack is all gonna be driven forward approximately engine speed. So you, you take a lot of counter-rotating weight out of the transmission, which makes the transmission more efficient, makes it safer. You know, some of us have seen the exploded drums. A lot of them have seen that on the internet, seen some explanation of the causes. There's a ton of confusion about that out there. As a transmission builder, it's a little bit scary to put products out the door with uh, the power level people are making these days. When you know the customer, it, you try to educate them. Some customers just don't want to hear it. Some don't understand it. Some of them are hard headed and say, oh, I've been doing it that way for 20 years. And they're just asking for an exploded drum. You, you have guys argue and say you're being dramatic. No, I'm not being dramatic. I like selling customer what they need, not overselling stuff. But we, we don't want anybody to experience a drum failure that takes out their foot or their leg. This takes care of that because it doesn't kind of rotate other than small diameter internal pieces. And it's, it's, so it's safer, it's a safer product and it's it's lighter weight. And if you look at it, when you really start looking at it, you know, they have the, the holes that are milled and drilled through holes to take weight out of it. It's fully splined inside to take weight out of it. If you look at the, even the pistons, the apply pistons, all these outer holes are there for weight reduction and uh you know it's a pretty pretty light pretty light setup you know all these milled you know they, they left ribs there for strength but they milled out where they could to reduce the weight so engineering standpoint sonics did a really great job on this you know we we, we like what we see here in and addition a, go one ahead. thing that's really nice is the way you stack the clutches you don't have to feeler gauge them and and work around hubs and a drum. You, they're telling you how many clutches of what right. thickness. The, clu the, the, the clutch, if you follow, if you use the clutches they supply, and you follow their instructions, your uh, your clutch pack clearance is gonna come out where it needs to because it's totally engineered that a standard, you know, 80,000 friction, a 77,000 steel, and they also supply some 60,000 steel, the, the clearance is engineered into it. So there's not a whole lot of guessing and back and forth unless you're gonna try to do something you know, a little different than what they instruct. In addition to, obviously, as you're saying, it's safer, but it should technically be more efficient as oh, well. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Should see some efficiency increase. I think that you will actually be able to see on a, on a fairly fast car in ET, 
and uh, you're definitely going to see less wear and tear on shafts and, and hard parts. Pretty exciting. Okay, back to stacking. All right. So, in addition to everything that they both just said, at this point, I want to bring in Alan Pope. Alan has been testing this module in Scott Taylor's car, and Sonics has had lots of testing on this as well for through various people. I believe your friend Hutch also was yeah, testing. Yeah, John Hutchinson was involved in the development and testing of it. So there's, there's, it's been out in testing for a little bit, so I wanna go ahead and include that here. It's a unique design in the fact that it incorporates both the forward and direct drums into one housing, which eliminates the anti-rotational parasitic drag that's associated with conventional design forward and direct drum independently. And what that does is will improve your 60 foot times, your reaction times, and the overall ET. And we've seen as much as two hundredths of a second improvement on 3,500 plus horsepower cars. So it has the capacity of big power, but its benefits really shine in lower power cars as well. So to briefly state it, this unit will improve all your performance times, and in, in, which in turn relates to durability. Uh, this transmission will last longer. The clutches are less impacted by the shifts, so they last longer. And then there's also the safety aspect of it as well. If you were to lose power at the top end of the racetrack or shut the engine off purposely, um, you're not going to be dealing with an overspeeding direct drum, which can cause an explosion and injury. So there's three things really to consider on this thing. The, both the acceleration, the durability, and the safety all combine to make a superior product. And it's labeled as the game changer for a reason. Um, one of the most asked questions that I receive about this product, is it worth the money? And the abs answer is absolutely it is, because if you was to price out all the individual components for this unit, uh, you're gonna see that it's not much more or less than what this unit provides in one box, a complete kit that provides everything you need from the stator support to the pump. So if you want to build a transmission that lasts and a transmission that is fast, go with the Sonex SmartTech drum. Also, you can purchase this module if you wanted to directly from Summit. The link for that is below, so you can check that out there. All right, one more thought here. Well, another thing I want to show, <clears throat> another thing that's popular, I don't know, it's one of the most discuss things on the internet about turbo or any transmission there's two questions people ask what fluid should i run and what kind of fancy clutch should i run this is an expensive module it comes with its clutches these are factory turbo 400 style grooved tan borg warner clutches there's and they're proven at 3000 plus horsepower so you don't need a fancy clutch. It's more about the hydraulics, the pressure, and the build than it is about a fancy clutch. And it also comes with stock steels. These aren't choline coated. There's nothing fancy about those. And some of it's builder preference. You know, some guys, for some reason or another, have experienced something they, they think they need a certain clutch. But experience has taught us that we, we really, we like these uh, high energy, Borg Warner high energy clutches. I've used those at very elevated power levels for many years now <clears throat> and they work really well but the sun ice module came with these clutches they're proven we've used them in high horsepower stuff we've been into transmissions and extremely high horsepower stuff that uh these are the clutches they, they were using okay well with that back to stacking all right and it is stacked for the most part so anything notable here that you'd like to mention um no, we got the drum assembly together earlier. That was pretty good. We did some rollerizing to the rear of the center support, and uh, it's mostly pretty standard. Most of what we've done, just other than the modules, new. Uh, we're about to put the pump, about to align the pump, put it together, and this is that Cohen. Cohen. Uh, it's obviously it's like a billet back half, and I think it's because they don't get cores anymore, but. We've got a wear plate in there, the billet back calf that's made, everything's made for this uh, larger diameter input shaft. Cohen with the pump includes their adjustable pressure regulator. What we're gonna do next is, uh, I made a bearing for the pump area right here. So typically you have a, anywhere from about a 60 thousandths to 120 thousandths pump washer that goes there. And I've got the bearing that's gonna be about 140 thousandths. So we're gonna check our clearance and, and machine off the back of the pump to set our front end plate. 
We're good. All the way through, it's been machine this, machine that, yeah. to get clearances. So it's like blueprinting. Yeah, you know, where he started at the back and just works to the top. It's all blueprinted and clearance like it should be. That's what I actually started this video saying. Like maintenance is one thing, but the initial setup is it very just critical. Time. It's just yeah. time consuming to set each, you know, and then it's a Saturday and some of my guys have the tools put away in their boxes that I would normally use to do this. So. Yeah, but it's still a day's work. Oh yeah, it's a to do full that. day's I mean, work, even if everything goes perfectly smooth. Putting the pump on for the final time, should yep. be. Hopefully. Hopefully, but all in play is checked and set. You guys clearanced a little off the pump to get the in play. We put a bearing here so it takes some material off and uh, we took it all off the pump. Everything's ready to assemble now. Nice. Yay! All right, Jake's a trooper. So is Dad. But Jake, Jake's from the Army. <laughs> it's uh, 2 a.m. We don't have to be to a race tomorrow. We don't actually have anywhere to be, <laughs> but we they're finishing this transmission tonight. So Extreme Automatics valve body, this is the same one that is in the 55. So wired the same and everything. This should just plug and play into the 55 without any issues. Tomorrow it'll just be putting it on the dyno, getting the pressure set, making sure it all shifts and moves and everything's good. And then uh, we'll have a new turbo 400. Pretty trick one too. Gonna be nice. I'm excited because we're not going to be working on transmission. Okay. Wrapped up. It's a good looking piece right there. That's been a Shout full out day's to gig. Jake for knowing what he's doing. <laughs> That's blueprinted. Final step for all transmissions that go out of your shop. Um, final step for this turbo 400. So on the dyno, it's not like it's a crazy horsepower engine or anything, but what are we looking for here? We're just gonna watch what our mainline pressure is. And we also have a, a gauge that we plug into the third gear pressure port, which is a modification we do to the reed case specifically for you guys, cause you are running a transducer on that. So you can see the two different pressures. Um, mainly watching pressures, see what the shifts feel like. We can't tell as good as you can in the vehicle what they feel like. We can kind of tell if they're way too harsh or, or kind of slide shifting. Uh, we can see the converter charge pressure on this oil pressure gauge here. And we can see converter flow, cooler line flow on the flow meter over here. Cool. So we're just gonna check it, make sure everything looks in the ballpark where we want it to be and probably adjust the line pressure to what we're looking for with your power level. Perfect. All right, guys, and that wraps it up for this video. So this is exciting. I'm excited about this series because we're getting closer to getting Dad's Nova back to having its own drivetrain. And this transmission was one of the first steps to that. My Camaro, some of you might remember Bad Marrow, I had a really nice transmission with that. I, I had my own engine that I bought and paid for and, and my own transmission and everything. It was a Reed Case 4L80, very nice build that Jake did. But something about getting it for the 55, it's a little bit higher power level. It's just, it's a really cool feeling. So I'm really excited to have that. Um, it's also very exciting to be doing a combination in the 55 that I'll, I'll have that's very, very similar to what Dad's is or will be for the Nova because um, that way we can have spare parts that work for both cars and we can interchange stuff and if I need to borrow something or he needs to borrow something, it's kind of plug and play. So really, really cool. Um, if you guys do remember from testing during sick week, you might remember from, I think it was either the first or second video, we had some transmission issues, which was with this transmission um, that we just built. We thought it was worse than it was. You guys might remember me showing you some metal in the fluid and saying like, this thing's eating itself. I don't know what the problem is. We could not get the converter charge pressure up. 
did not have a clue what was going on. So we ended up swapping out that transmission for dad's transmission, which if you guys remember previously, actually had a lot of issues last year. But it wasn't actually the transmission hurt or anything like that it was the fact that we had a drum that was not working the way that it should so anyways we ended up fixing that dad fixed that by using our old drum and sleeving it so we pulled his old not so reliable out and it actually was super reliable once he had it fixed it ran all of sick week and we ran that just because we couldn't didn't want to risk having something happen during the actual week um, so we just carried mine which we just built in this video as a spare but I thought that we had a major failure. We actually pulled it out of the car and we we're going to take it back to Jake. But our friends at Sonics, which please note, I actually never worked with Sonics before this video. So there was a lot of Sonics mentioned, but it's not like they were a sponsor or a partner or anything like that. We, uh, I met them at PRI and chose their Sonics module to be the product of the year like SEMA product or not SEMA PRI judges pick of the year is like my own personal pick that I did with PRI because it's a really big game changer as Alan says it's like one of the first pieces that's like a new piece of technology for an older platform but it's so import important uh, not that turbo 400s are outdated but I'm saying like you know created so long ago this is one of the first major new um, innovative pieces for that in a long time so anyways um so i chose their piece there i ended up talking to them was not sponsored none of this was a partnership but um where i was actually going with that is we kind of were in contact after that and they asked they wanted to know how it was going so i told them you know we had a little bit of an issue so they actually asked if we could send it to them and they just wanted to go through and and look at it and they got it up there ended up figuring out nothing was really wrong so the metal that you saw was just planetaries and I don't know it looked a lot worse than it was it's just planetary is kind of breaking in um, and there is an internal uh, dump valve that you didn't see in this video because it was added later and it has a hose and it's a very short hose very little clearance it was actually rubbing on the module and it created a little bit of metal shaving but anyways nothing too big so that was all fixed um, they did find a slight cut on one of the ceiling rings, a little nick. We believe that is what partly was affecting the converter charge pressure. The reason Jake saw pressure on the dyno and we didn't see it after was because, or we didn't see as much pressure once we got home was because after he took it off the dyno, he decided to go ahead and put that internal dump in there uh, we were ready to go we didn't really have time to stay much longer so we took it back because everything was fine but it turns out that the the ceiling ring did get nicked and so that's where the pressure was one of the pressure issues and then there's also a relief valve that's on the back of the 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 pan on the transmission and it's set at a certain pressure so that way you don't have too much converter charge pressure. It's a relief valve. And the valve was working in the sense that it would blow off at the right pressure, but it wouldn't close right. So there was a couple different things. Uh, we're actually getting ready to go testing. So we're going to put, we have that transmission, the one we just built back in the car. Um, we're testing tomorrow. So we'll see how it goes. But anyways, it's a lot of explanation. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that the, the blog won't be out today, but I hope you guys go check the On All Cylinders blog from Summit, get a little bit deeper in the tech over there, and um, yeah, I hope you guys stay along for this journey as we get the 55 its own drivetrain built. Just a big shout out to Summit for being a partner on this series, and a big shout out to Jake for always giving us time with questions and letting us come down there and build it and be with him. He's a great friend, great transmission builder. And uh, to Alan Pope for being available for questions and for, you know, just being a great bounce ideas off the wall kind of guy. He's also him and his wife, Carol, are great people. So anyways, links to stuff is below. If you guys want to check out some parts I got from Summit down there, like the case and the smart module and things like that, check that out. Um, but that's it for now. Lots more stuff coming up. As always, be happy and go fast and stay pretty. I'll see you guys next time.